welcome. Um, my name is Rita Panula. I am, as Jen said, the design director for Impress Arts. Um, and today we'll be making a wall hanging. So I know that many of you, I see many of you um, popped on over from our Facebook Live. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you with us again today. And for my newbies, hello. Um, I'm going to throw back to Jen while I get set up and Jen's going to tell you some really informa uh, great information about Impress Art and a campaign that we have to inspire kindness. So Jen, I'm going to throw it back to you and then I will take it to my bench. Yes. Uh, so just yes. really quickly, um, I'm going to do my best today to answer as many questions as possible in the chat. If for some reason I don't get to you, please reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook under Impress Art, and we'll be happy to answer your question there. Um, we also do our own Facebook Lives on every Tuesday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. So Tuesday, 12 Eastern Standard Time, you can pop over and see Rita and learn some more tips and tricks from her. Um, I will be in the chat of that Facebook Live or even maybe my coworker, Joanne, who might be taking over these Facebook, uh, these Facebooks and these Michaels classes from myself. Um, and we have a fun campaign going on right now. It's called our Stamp It Forward campaign. And it's our way to challenge you all to do random acts of hand stamp kindness. So we gave away free brace of blanks to our customers last week. And we're just asking everyone to stamp kind words of perseverance or empowerment or um, love, hope, positivity on these bracelets and spread the love and kindness around the world to family, friends, essential workers, a complete stranger you might walk up to and just hand them a bracelet and make them smile that day. Um, and it's just our way to, we made it through 2020. 2021 is going to be a great year for us. Um, and we're just going to spread some kindness. So you can hop on over to our social media pages, see our campaign, all the lovely projects Rita is creating for this campaign, and join us by hashtagging Stamp It Forward to these pieces that you're handing out to everyone and letting us know who you, who you stamped it forward to and why. So it could be your mom because you love her so much. It could be my grocery um, store employee that I see every Sunday when I go grocery shopping and he... I don't know, hands me the best ripe bananas every week and my family loves them. Um, so we just wanna see these stories pile up on our hashtag and we wanna showcase them in our stories so everyone gets to see um, everyone's amazing work and the stories are beautiful um, and they're very sweet and we just wanna spread kindness and love around to all of us. Um, that's about it on my end. I know I talked a lot and we don't want to waste time because I know this wall hanging can take a little bit of time. Right. So if Rita, if you're ready. We are ready. I'm going to throw it back to Rita. And again, any questions you have, just uh, chat it to us and Rita will either read it or I'll respond with an answer um, as the class goes on. Okay, so I just want to show you guys some samples if you really want to get elaborate with your wool hanging. Um, I added some really great yarn from Michaels off the bottom of it. But today we're going to be working with aluminum, which is these silver bracelet blanks right here. Okay, and I purchased some really neat um, glass vials. And I feel like the glass vials just really inspire spring. All right. Um, and we're going to place those glass vials where those crystals are. But I just wanted to show you that you could use your imagination. I'm going to show you the basics, but I want you to be inspired and I want you to create um, something that you feel proud of and that you would want to hang in your studio or your room or kitchen, um, even in a window. So here's another that I just literally used some yarn from Michaels. All right, and these crystals were purchased at Michaels as well. And you can see that these bracelet blanks were done with a mandala pattern that is the Southwest mandala pattern that's available at Michaels. And then today I'm gonna to just teach you basic um, texture techniques to create something like that. But these are the copper bracelets that you could find at Michaels. 
the aluminum bracelets that you could find at Michael's. And we also have a brass um, gold tone color that you could find at Michael's. So for today's project, um, the tools that you're gonna use, I'm just gonna bring these down so they don't, when I'm hammering, they don't create an issue. So for today's project, you're going to need the screw down hole punch, which is available at your Michaels, your local Michaels. You're going to need six inch, or if you have seven inch laying around the house, um, quarter inch bracelet blanks, okay? You're gonna need your multifunction hammer with all of your different heads, a Sharpie marker and enamel marker, some paper towel just to clean up that Sharpie marker when um, maybe we get a little bit on our metal. These glass tubes are fantastic. I purchased these in the value section of Michael's. They're $1.50, okay, they're a glass tube. And these sit perfectly inside of that triangle shape that we're gonna make with the bracelets. You could put some water in there, maybe a bamboo, a bamboo, bamboo plant, mm -hmm. or I right now in my bathroom have some, a spider plant coming out of one of them. So if you want a really big tube, you could use that. And then what I used last time were these really great necklace glass containers. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull one out, take your paper out, and these are great also. This is great for memorabilia, also small plants, air plants. Um, you, if you've gone on a vacation and you are very fond of sea glass or shells, you can fill up your vial with all sorts of fun memories. All right, and they also have a couple of sizes, but these two sizes are the ones that really suck out for me. So I will wrestle with that paper after. But like I said, you don't have to put any water in them. You can fill them up with sand from different beaches. They come with really nice cork tops, okay? And you can incorporate all of that into your design, all right? The other tool you're gonna need is a ring bending plier. Okay, which is also available at Michael's. I'll show you what that is right here. Okay, um, and your buffing and sanding blocks. Now these are consumables. So after about a month or so, you're gonna have to replace them, but they are fantastic. Some jump rings from Beetleon um, and some bead strands. Now these are the green bead strands in the bead aisle at Michael's. I like the clear crystals. All right. These are glass. They are not of a quartz. Um, they're not quartz, but they shine and look beautiful in the sun. So if you are planning on putting your wall hanging in your window, these are going to look phenomenal. Okay. You can also purchase the pieces of clear crystal quartz at Michael's, which are these right here. Okay and some really, really nice amethyst beads and string that all together. So I'm gonna walk you through this whole process now. We're gonna begin with our frame, okay? I'm gonna make sure to pull out four bracelet blanks and we're gonna to begin to pull the plastic off of them and create our frame. So we're gonna mark our holes. Any questions, Jen, yet so far? Not, nope, not yet. And I think I'm really feeling the mixed metal vibe lately. So we are going to, it's personal preference. You can throw some rose gold jump rings in there. I today am going to go with a brass, which is a gold color. And just mix it up a little bit. That's what I'm feeling like today. So you want to pull the film off the front and the back of these. Now in your packaging, your first one comes with the film taken off the front, okay? And the reason why we put the film on these bracelet blanks is that in transport, we don't want them to rub together in the package and get, um, get destroyed. So that's what the film is for. Now with these aluminum bracelet blanks, they are food grade aluminum. You could stamp on the front and back. They are very soft metal, so they are easy to stamp. All right, I'm just pulling my film off. And 
once again, I've put cream on my hands. So pulling these things, <laughs> don't, don't put cream on your hands when you're ready to peel this plastic off because uh, it makes for a slippery surface. So I'm gently using my pliers at the tip and pulling back and then pulling with my fingers. Okay, so we have our four pieces for our frame. So in front of you, what you're gonna wanna do is obviously you wanna work with a clear workspace, okay, free of any metals. And you are gonna create your frame, all right? And what I like to do here is just put it right in front of me and your tops are gonna overlap. But before they do that, I like to mark them. So you could take a Sharpie and you are going to mark the holes right at the top, about one and a half, one and a, one and a half millimeter down, okay? And then you are gonna come back in, same at your ends, one millimeter in, just like that. And then same on your third, okay? The difference that with your third, if you plan on hanging, something from your center, you're going to need to put a hole square in the middle. So your bracelet is six inches long. You're gonna to wanna to mark it at your three inch mark. And that's where you're gonna put your additional hole. If you choose not to put a hole there and you want to hang that um, yarn with a lark's head knot, you could do that as well. I am going to, I'm gonna use these really, really nice crystals today. So I am going to, mark it in my center at my three inches. And I'm gonna come in with my screw down hole punch, okay? You wanna make sure that the gauge of your jump rings match, you know, are a little smaller than the gauges you have on both sides of your screw hole down hole, screw down hole punch. I'm gonna use the larger size, okay? I'm gonna come in right in the middle, making sure that my punch, and that's what this is, this is called a punch, really covers that dot that I made, that mark that I made with my marker. And I don't know if you guys could really see that in there, but you know, you can move it around. And then once you're on that dot, you wanna securely hold it into place and then begin to screw down your punch. You're gonna feel it pierce the metal. Once you feel that it pierces the metal, you're going to take it and just unscrew. The greatest thing about this hole punch, guys, is that it punches through our premium metals. All right. So I know Michaels carries two hole punches. They carry the hand hole, handheld hole punch. They also carry the screw down hole punch. So what I need you, um, if you're looking to make this project, you need to use the screw down hole punch because it is designed for thicker metals, okay? You cannot, um, you will break your handhold uh, punch if you use it on this bracelet. And I'm gonna come back in, follow my marks. And put my holes in. The other thing that's nice about this is that you don't have any puckering. Sometimes when you use other screw down hole punches, you get a puckering. Puckering meaning it's excess metal on the back. With this hole punch, it leaves your metal nice and flat, okay, with no sharp surfaces. Come in. We have a quiet group today. We do. Oh. All right, so my first is done. So this is my bottom rod. Okay, I have my center hole, my two end holes, and then I'm gonna continue with my top.
and you could play around with it. You could take a look at it. You know, you don't really have to commit it first. Just get it nice and tight in there and then look around it, making sure that you have adequate space around your blank and then pierce your hole. A little too quiet today. <laughs> I know. They're probably ready for the weekend. <laughs> I think everyone's ready for the weekend. You know, when the weather starts getting nice, I think I'm actually, my brain checks out come Wednesday afternoon. So, <laughs> and then I'm going to work on my last piece. Now, since we are making good time, I think that we will use our center and pierce our holes, I think, at the end for our center bar that holds the um, glass vial. So I think we'll do those last. All right. So I'm going to show you three different te texture techni techniques that you can use on this project. Okay, you could choose one, but we're going to go over and cover all three of them. All right, so you could choose one of them and do your entire project with that one texture, but I really want to show you the different textures. So each piece of my metal, I'm going to use a different texture. So I'm going to start with my sidebar, okay? And I always like to put my block in a diamond pattern in front of me. I feel like it gives it me more space to work with the bracelets, okay? And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna unscrew my multifunction hammer. I'm just gonna pop out my chasing head. I'm gonna switch that from my ball pin. I'm just gonna tighten my end. I'm gonna place my fingers on my blank, on my block, okay? So it's very important that when you're metal stamping, whether you're using letters or texture, uh, any kind of hammer that you are stamping on a seal block, okay? Um, I'm gonna place my fingers where I feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable putting your fingers there, you could always take a piece of stamp tape, which is available at Michael's, place it on your block to hold down your blank, Okay, but I'm gonna use my finger. So I feel like I'm pretty safe at the edge. I'm going to take my ball peen hammer. I'm gonna repeatedly hit my blank, being very careful while I'm going over my holes. This ball peen head creates a really nice effect in the metal, okay? And the closer your impressions and your indents are together, the nicer it will look. Look how pretty that is, guys. All right, let's see if I could make this bigger for me so I could see, there we go, that I'm not um, blurry at all. There we go. So it creates a really nice texture in your metals. So I'm gonna continue that across my blank and I'm only going to do the one side. Now this head is very popular. Um, a lot of metal campers because you could also do the outskirts. If you've ever looked at a piece of hand stamp jewelry and the outskirts have a really nice texture to it. This is the head that you're gonna to wanna to use for that. Okay, you can also use the chasing head, which is going to be the next Etsy technique I'm going to show you. I'm going to continue to texture your entire bar. And like the copper one I showed you in the beginning of the class, you could also, if you have regular design stamps, you can stamp a pattern on it.
I'm going to flip it over again, placing my fingers, work from my outside to my inside. Again, being careful around the holes that I stamp. And if your bracelet is starting to bend and get a little wonky, okay, that's okay. I'm going to show you how you could fix that. It's fine. When you're, when, when you are forging into metal with steel, okay, or any other stamp that you're using, you're actually pushing the metal around. So your metal is going to get a little wonky, but we could definitely fix that with the head that is in the nylon head that is in your multifunction hammer kit. And almost done. It's definitely a workout when you are texturing metal. All right, so I have finished the first bar in my wall hanging. Okay, and I'm gonna show you once we're done texturing all of them, how we get that wonkiness out of there. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to work on my other sidebar and I'm gonna just go around the outskirts of it. Okay, so I'm gonna put my chasing head in it and tighten my end. With this, you're gonna do a little bit different. This you notice is, has a little roundness to it. Okay, more of a convex shape, con concave shape. Okay, so it's not gonna be as concentrated as the ball peen head, which is a smaller, rounder shape. It's gonna leave more of a crevice in your metal. So I really don't want to, I'm gonna show you how to do it two ways. The first way is to go around the bottom and around your edges, and then you could come in through the center. And you're gonna see it's gonna leave a really nice texture, but it's more of a wide gap. So how I do that and how I work with my ends is again, I put my fingers where I feel comfortable and I hit and pull back. And I'm really just concentrating on the ends. Do you guys see how pretty that looks? Okay, looks like a really nice deep, wide diamond cut on your ends. And I'm going to turn it around. Okay, flip it over. And come through again. the other side. Okay, and that's going to leave a really nice texture on the outskirts of that bracelet. Okay. Now, if you want to come in through the center, you want to be really um, not hit it as aggressively as we did with the ball peen, but you want to make sure that you are more in sync with this one. So instead of tapping all over, Okay, you're just really gonna hit it once and then move over. All right, so I will show you. I'm gonna hit it once. Because I really wanna follow that pattern mm -hmm. of how I did my edges. You see that you have texture on your ends texture on your other side and a really nice texture throughout that center. Okay. Now for my bottom bar, we're going to do a different texture as well. And in your kit is a sprinkle stamp. Now you could use the sprinkle stamp. You can use any six millimeter design stamp that you have. 
and I'm going to pull out my sprinkles. Okay. Michael's also has different texture mm -hmm. stamps available. This is what comes in your kit. It's a six millimeter design stamp. All right. You can use it stationary with your Argo angle hammer, or you can use it with your multifunction hammer. So the difference between this head, okay, and your other attachments is your other attachments have a notch cut out of the center. Um, or not this a quarter in a quarter inch in. All right, you want to make sure that when you are using your uh, multifunction hammer, that screw that you're tightening really sits nicely in there. We couldn't do that with the design stamp because it would compromise the metal, and then we couldn't you, you couldn't use it as just a regular design stamp. So while you are using your sprinkle stamp, it might be that you have to tighten your bottom screw in the middle of the process, depending on how hard you are hitting your metal. All right. You also going back because I didn't tell you guys, you want to make sure that the multifunction hammer is really put in the palm of your hand and you are caressing the bottom and you have that screw in the palm, in your palm. Okay. That's going to stop it from getting a little loose when you are using the sprinkle stamp. Also with this hammer, you don't want to hold it up here because what happens if you hit it too hard, then you have boo-boos on your knuckles. So always remember when you're using your multifunction hammer to have it nice and nicely in the palm of your hand. So I'm going to come in with my bottom bar. Okay, same thing. texture. Fire and now keep in mind, this is soft strike aluminum, which means it's very, it's soft, okay? So it takes your impressions really, really well. It's easy to use. I'm just gonna texture. Turn it around and continue to work from the outside. And be mindful of my holes. Tightening my screw. I just want to troubleshoot um, a little bit. Uh, if you are stamping and you're being a little bit too aggressive, like I was, you get these little nicks and sharp pieces in your metal. I'm going to show you how you can fix that. So I'm going to take my sprinkle stamp head out and I'm going to place my chasing head in. And now if you don't, you could do it one of two ways. Um, if you have your chasing head, you could use your chasing head if you don't have your sanding blocks. Um, with your sanding blocks, you're going to use your coarse side and you're going to knock it down a little bit and that's going to smooth it out. You could also use your chasing head. So you're going to put your piece that is very sharp towards your block. Okay. You're going to Put your blank on your side, take your chasing head, and just knock it just a little bit. Light tap, not aggressive. And what that's going to do is that your steel is going to help hit the bottom of your bracelet, and you're going to have that really nice finish again. All right, we're just going to knock that metal right back into place. Now, the wonkiness of it. You see here that we have a little dip in our bracelet, okay? So we have it straight, and then it goes down a little bit and comes back up. That's an easy fix. You're gonna take your multifunction hammer, you're gonna take your nylon head, place it right inside, tighten it, okay? You're gonna come in, and do you see how you see that space in between? And maybe I will show you this way. So if a piece of paper or you're seeing daylight come from the other side of your block, if you guys can see that, that's not good, okay? So again, you wanna place your blank on your block. You wanna take your nylon head, take it a couple of 
couple of medium taps, okay? And you'll see now you're nice and flat. No paper could go through. So you are perfectly straight and back to the way your bracelet came out of the packaging. And what I like to do is I just like to, it's no harm in just light taps along the sides just for extra measure, okay? Same thing with my other bracelet. I have, I see space in between, actually this way. Light tapping. Here we go. And the last, we're gonna turn that over, take a look at it, you will see that light coming through. And we're just gonna knock that right back into place. So three of our bars that we textured are now nice and straight. Okay, just like they came out of the packaging. And now we're gonna come in to that center bar. That center bar is going to encapsule your glass jar. So what I wanna do is what I didn't show you was how to bulkeen the outskirts of this bar. So I'm gonna come back in with my bulkeen head, put my fingers, and I'm literally just going to texture the outskirts. Now, this is a really pretty, beautiful technique to use. It um, gives a really nice artisan effect. And the sun dances off of it beautifully. So again, I'm not going to be so aggressive with it. I'm going to flip it around. Work from my outside in. Leave it a little bit that way. Once you get the hang of it, I always say to my beginners to work from the outside in because everyone's afraid of where they're placing their fingers. So if you've done this a few times and you are not afraid of hitting your finger, feel free to work from the inside out. All right. I'm coming around and I'm a righty, so I'm more comfortable with flipping it horizontally. I put stamp on the right side of that bracelet. So now we're gonna come in, we're gonna make sure that we're still flat. I really don't need to take my nylon hammer, um, my head to this blank, because I wasn't so aggressive with it. We're gonna come in now and we're gonna use our ring bending tool. You are going to take your metal. You are gonna, like I said, it's six. So you're gonna mark your three. Then you're gonna place your bracelet following the curvature. All right, just like that. And you're gonna bring it right in. So I want you to squeeze right at that center, okay? And then I want you to give it a nice squeeze on both sides to round that off. All right. And what that is going to do is that that's going to ensure that you are going to have a really nice place 
for your glass cylinder inside of it. So I want you to pull it out just a little bit, okay? And then, like I said, use the glass of your choice, okay? So I'm going to use this cylinder right here. I'm gonna pull that plastic out. Let's see if I can get that, I mean, that uh, paper out. Let's get that paper out. Oh, there we go. Oh, and it went back in again. Let's pull that out. There we go. All right. And I just wanna make sure that I have a really snug fit, just like that. Now you can use your GS Hypo, okay? Um, a little dot of it and put that in there. I'm gonna take my ring bending pliers and just knock in my ends a little bit so it fits in there nice and snug. And I will show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna come back in, okay? I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna come around some more, give it a squeeze, okay, round it off. And then I'm just gonna push it up. So it kind of looks like that. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And you wanna make sure that you are even, okay? You have a really nice section here that your glass jar is gonna snap right into it. So now what I like to do is I just like to come at the bottom and give it a little squeeze, okay? Making it a little tighter. And this is how your glass is going to be held inside of that. Do you see that on both sides? So you wanna make sure that you are a little tight in your center, okay? I'm gonna come back in. I'm just gonna bend it a little bit more towards me on both sides. All right to create that space for my glass. Pull that out again. Okay, so now that I have my center, okay, I'm gonna pull my block away and I'm going to make my marks for my center holes. So now I know I have one bar at the top that I'm gonna cross over, match my holes up, okay? My bar at the bottom and match my holes up. And how I'm gonna keep those from moving is I'm gonna use two chain nose pliers and my jump rings. So like I said, I'm gonna come in with brass because I kind of wanna mix my brass and my silver today. So I'm gonna come in with my jump ring. I'm laterally twisting it so I don't compromise the metal. I'm gonna start at the top, bring it through one end. Same thing with my next piece. All right. So I have them really nice and separated. Then I'm gonna come in and I'll show you from here and I'm gonna laterally twist them closed. But what I'm gonna to do to this one is I really wanna cross over my jump rings, all right? Or if you have um, beetle on wire at home, you could use that. So I literally just left a little bit of a cross over in it. I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm gonna go over just a little bit so that my wire is overlapping. Okay, and I'm gonna keep on doing that, coming back in and just patting it down so it's nice and flat. Okay, so once I have that done, I just like to reinforce it. I like to make sure that my jump rings, that the wire is not sticking up. Perfect. And I'm gonna come in with another jump ring and I'm gonna put that right through my top jump ring, okay? So I'm gonna come through here 
And then I'm gonna hang another one off there. So I have a nice top. Oh. And there is your first set of jump rings, okay? We're gonna do something a little bit different on the edges because we obviously don't want them to swing and sway. So we'll be kind of crushing, not really crushing, but tightening the jump rings on the bottom. Again, I'm opening, coming in, running my jump ring through. Now, if you don't wanna use jump rings, you don't have to. You can use, again, any kind of wire, beetle on wire. I'm gonna come in, cross over my jump rings, okay? And I'm really going to put my opening in the back and come in and just crush a little bit. There we go. So it's nice and secure. Oh, that's a little blurry. So it's nice and secure on your ends. I'll flip that over. Okay, you could see that. And you do have a little bit of room. So if you wanna hang some crystals off the ends with um, head pins and jump rings, you can. We're gonna do the same to the other side. Come in, open my jump ring. Place it on there, come through with a second, come to the back of our piece, cross them over, okay? Then I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to squeeze, making sure that it's over the overlapping of the jump ring is towards the back of my piece. There we go, just like that. How pretty is that? So you have a really nice mixed metals piece. You have a really pretty piece in the center. You have your hang tab all ready for it. All right, and now we're gonna come in and we're gonna mark where we are using, where we're putting our center, okay? So I'm gonna come in and I'm just, I wanna come in with my bar from the back as a design aspect, okay? You always wanna make sure that you know you have enough room for your glass cylinder. So you're going to put your glass cylinder through. See how nicely that holds? But I would definitely, if you'd like, if you feel um, insecure about it um, and not secure enough about it not falling out, so definitely you could put a bead of glue, I would let, let it dry overnight. Okay, and you wanna bring it down so that you have you know, adequate, adequate space on top and a little bit of space on the bottom, depending on what cylinder you're using. All right, so I'm gonna place this flat down. And I am going to continue to mark my holes from the top. All right, then I'm gonna come back in and use my screw hole punch. Now, I know I've shown this in the past where you could definitely use, um, you could use your GS Hypo. You can definitely use GS Hypo, it will stick. You will have to let it dry. But for pur class purposes, we don't have that time. So piercing holes and using your jump rings would work the same. And I feel like it just adds a little bit more of a design element to it. Pull that out. Do that to our other side.
All right, now that we have two of our holes, we're gonna bring back our center bar again. All right, just making sure, double checking that we are all ready to and happy with the location of it. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. All right, and then I'm going to mark my holes. There we go. And come in with my screw down hole punch. I would just slide out your cylinder. Come back in. And instead of using jump rings, I think I'm going to use, and you can use your jump rings the same way we did for all four sides. But if you don't have jump rings and you have any kind of beetle on wire, I think that's what we're going to use. And I think I'm going to put a really nice bead. You could do a cluster of seed beads if you'd like. All right, and I think I'm gonna come in. Let's see what I have. I have a rose gold. Hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see. And I think I have some, I have some amethyst beads somewhere. Let's see, I have a crystal. I am running out of beads. I better make a run to Michael's. I could tell you that much. I always say that I'm running out and I go and I fill up and then I run out again. It's a slippery slope, right? So let's use some amethyst, which are also, I believe on your red strands at Michael's. You could use anything. I'm just gonna cut a piece of my wire about two inches long. I'm gonna come in now it's up to you if you enjoy wire wrapping, you can, you know, put as many as you'd like. I am simply going to basically make a head pin with my crystals. So I will show you how I'm doing that. All right, so there we go, just like that. And I'm gonna come in, I put my glass cylinder back through. All right, come through the back. All right, I'm going to put my pin right through that I've created both holes. All right, so it pierces right through. I push that through. And then just for a design aspect, I'm gonna come around, because I love rose gold. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna wrap that wire. You know, really pretty. Just go over both ends, you know, just to add another element of design to it. And like I said, you could use several beads on your wire. Um, if you've never taken a beetle on Michael's class with Meredith or Wyatt, I suggest doing that because they are definitely metal wire experts. I am merely an amateur. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut a two inch piece. I'm going to put my bead on it. I'm 
make my pin. And then I'm gonna come through my metal from the front to the back. Or you can, you know, do it. If you don't wanna use a bead, you can go from the back to the front. I just really like how that bead looks on there. And again, I'm bringing some of the wire around it. Actually, it went the wrong way. The wire around it as a design element. Same thing on my other side. And I have these really pretty on each side, really pretty um, amethyst beads. Then I'm gonna start with my center. And with my center, I am going to use the strand from Michaels of those teardrop faceted glass beads. Rita, I just wanna give you a time update. You have about like 10 minutes. Oh, yep, we're finishing it up. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. All right. So I'm gonna come in with some beetle on wire. I'm gonna bring in my amethyst bead for the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna come in cross it over just like that. I'm going to put one of my beads in that center. Oh, there's still a cord through it. That last bead on the Michaels bead cards, there's it's always wrapped through. So you definitely want to, when you're using a clear bead, it's a little tricky. So you want to pay attention to that. So I'm going to come up I'm gonna pinch it at the top. Follow the top half curvature of my bead, okay? Bring my wires together. Okay, I'm gonna come up and I'm going to take a pair of round nose pliers. I'm gonna make that hoop, all right? Come back to the front, bring that wire a little bit towards you. All right, and then I'm gonna begin to wrap it around my bead. Ruta, do you know what gauge wire that bead on wire is? Yeah, let me grab, I'm gonna, it's on the- um, Packaging, yep. Packaging, yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap that around. Take the back, give it a couple of nips. Like I said, I'm not a wire worker by any means. So if you are and you're watching me do this, <laughs> I apologize. So there we go. We have a really nice top to that. And I just think it looks really pretty. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to have another piece. All right, I'm going to take my round those pliers. I'm gonna twist it so it meets the end of the metal, bring it back, and I'm gonna create just a head pin, round those head pin. I am going to put my bead on, okay? Give it a, another snip. Come back around, I want this smaller. So I'm gonna come back around. Close my hoop and come back. All right, so I have a smaller hoop on the top than I have on the bottom. I'm gonna come back in, open that up, slide my crystal on. All righty, I'm gonna close that again. So I made my drop. Now I'm gonna come in, and like I said, I was gonna mix metals today. I'm gonna to use my brass 
gold toned jump ring. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna come in. Okay. And hang that jump ring right from that center hole using two pliers, laterally twisting it together. And there is your crystal drop. All right. So you have a really nice hanging. You could put anything you want in there. I like the idea of different vacation sands, maybe that you've taken, hikes that you've um, got maybe little pebbles or rocks or sea glass. So there is your project, guys. Super simple, only took us an hour and it will last forever. All right, and I'm pretty sure that we all have a ton of beads for Michaels or some kind of a cylinder in the house to use. All right, so get your fingers working. And if you have not already made your purchase to begin your metal stamping journey, I suggest you do so because it is very fun. Um, the wire get, oh, I, woo, I think this is, I want to say it's 20 gauge. I believe it's 20 gauge. I believe it's 20 gauge wire. Awesome. All right. So this is our favorite time, Jen. I know. I saw Susan's been with us. I think she, I don't know if she's been stamping or she's been taking notes. <laughs> see. I see. Oh, hi, Susan. I didn't see you. How are you? I love seeing everybody's faces. Susan takes notes. Camera on. <laughs> no one else has their camera on. No, All right. Yeah. You're very shy today. Everyone's very quiet, very shy. You know what it is? It's just, it's one of those days. I think it's just been a really long week. No. That could, that could totally be it, Jen. Because we've had a long week. We did. We've also cooled again. So we're back in like 40 degrees compared to 60. That's so. what I that's what I was saying before. <laughs> I feel like February knocked on the door this morning and I let her in. <laughs> locked her out. So thank you guys so much for joining Jen and I today. We really appreciate you guys. We appreciate Michaels for um, allowing us to bring you these classes. All right. Our and next class I want to say is like May 13th or 20th and it's a mandala um a copper <gasps> mandala necklace southwest oh, inspired fun. with turquoise beads um hanging off of it on a leather cord so that's definitely something to tune in if you're advanced or want to learn some more advanced skills uh this is a project for you and Lynn excited. Mandala Thursdays. Mandala Thursdays. <laughs> and don't forget to come check us out on Tuesdays at impressart.com on Facebook. Uh, impressart.com. Impressart at Facebook and in, in on Facebook. Um and join oh, our lives. Oh, so I don't know. Someone turned. Oh, I think that's Alicia. Is that Alicia? That might be Alicia. Oh, Alicia from Puerto Rico just turned her camera on. Hi. Uh, hi, Alicia. Yeah. Is she on a hammock like last time? No, we're in, are we in a bead store, Alicia? We yeah. are. Look at, hi ladies. Hi <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, fantastic. Well, have fun. Look at that. Oh, I could have fun in there. I think we all need to take a trip to Puerto Rico to go see Alicia. I will be down there in February of next year for a wedding. <laughs> All right. Well, it was nice seeing you guys and we hope to see you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye guys.